Mr. White, your six o'clock is here. It's John yesterday. Thank you, Lori. My compliments to your stylist. Great suit. I picked it out, Mr. White. Ah, then my compliments to Human Resources for hiring you. You hired me yourself, Mr. White. Oh, I see. Tell him to come right in, please. Mr. White will see you now, Mr. Yesterday. Thank you. Come over here, John. Have a look at this sunset. My advice to you is, if in your next life you come back as a filthy rich businessman, remember to get an office with a view like this. It's the only part that's really worth it in the end. I can't even remember what I've done in this life, Mr. White. Henry. Call me Henry. You used to call me that. How is your mother doing? She has a slight cold. She seems like a good person. She's been telling me a lot about my life, but I can't seem to remember anything about it. Not a thing. Give her my best. And let me pick your brains for a moment. What has she told you? You never used to talk about yourself in the old days. What has your mother told you about your childhood? All there is to tell. Only child, shy, few friends, obedient, athletic. I just wish I could remember. What do you know about your youth? I threw myself into my schoolwork. Apparently, I'm smart. I have a master's in the history of religion from my mother. She's a worldwide authority on the history of satanic cults. The terrible thing is, is that I don't remember a single thing I learned in all those years in the university, except what was in the books you sent me in the hospital and what my mother has been telling me. Do you have a partner? My mother says I had a girlfriend a long time ago. Uh, Suzanne. Now I'm single, it seems. What has she told you about your likes? This is strange. She told me that I never liked grapes. But the other day I tried one and it was delicious. Interesting. To what extent are our likes and dislikes conditioned by our memories? By the way, I love grapes. Everything all right at the hospital? Yes, of course. Thank you for taking care of the bill. I didn't do it. My money did. Sometimes it gets tired of rotting in the bank. Tell me, John, have you managed to remember anything about your past on your own? No. Well, sometimes I get small flashes of random images, sounds. It's happened three times now. Watching a movie, looking at my hand, seeing a bluebird. Curious, isn't it? Tell me more. What was it you remembered when you were watching that movie? It took place in Paris. Suddenly, I saw, I don't know, a sort of antique shop. A girl. What came to mind when you looked at your hand? Well, it was actually the scar on my hand. The image of a strange person appeared in my mind. Some kind of priest in a church. He was talking about killing someone. Me. What happened when you looked at this blue bird? It perched on the windowsill in the hospital. Suddenly I saw myself with a beard and long hair in a blizzard. Oh, goodness, John. I haven't even offered you a chair. I'm very sorry for what happened, John. Very sorry. I can't help thinking that it's all my doing. On the contrary, I've come here to thank you. And to get some answers, I imagine. What do you want to know? I want to know who I am. I'm not God, John. If you want to solve that mystery, go to a church and pray. I can only resolve human dilemmas. Why did you send those books on satanic cults to me in the hospital? To help your mother re-educate you, and with an eye to a matter that we had between us. One that we still have. What connects me to you? There's a lot, John. You were working for me when you tried to kill yourself. You got too involved in the investigation. You lost your perspective. Lori has the contract, by the way. Ask for her copy on your way out if you want. What did my investigation consist of? I hired you to get information about the Order of the Flesh, a satanic cult from the 15th century, in the hope that this would help us trap a present-day killer. My own investigation wasn't going anywhere. Why did you hire me? I hired your mother first, John. But after a while, she came to a dead end. 
I didn't know where to go from there. She said that if anyone could get further, it would be you. Tell me about this killer. He's been killing hobos for years. First he only burned them, but then his modus operandi evolved. Why are you so interested in capturing him? For a time, I worked as a volunteer in an NGO called the Children of Don Quixote. They help the homeless. Over the years, I stopped working with them because there's something that can help them more than I can. My money. It's been covering all their expenses since my parents died and I took over White Enterprises. I'm not going to allow anyone to keep attacking these people, John. And you're going to help me. What led you to link him to this cult? At a certain point, he started carving a sort of Y into the bodies of his victims, the symbol of the Order of the Flesh. How did the hobo killer evolve? He stopped burning his victims and started torturing them using satanic rituals. What had you discovered before hiring me? The Order of the Flesh was founded in 1463 by an ex-priest named Gines de Arduña. What was the Order of the Flesh about? We know very little. They worshipped the devil and combined alchemy with torture in search of God knows what, until the Inquisition began to persecute them. Did the Inquisition put a stop to the Order of the Flesh? In 1498, when it seemed like Cardinal Cisneros, the Grand Inquisitor, had them cornered, they disappeared from the map. They evaporated. No one knows how or to where. What did I find out? You started doing some research in the archives at the University of Salamanca in Spain, and you found something curious. A missive from the guard Captain Miguel de Somosierra to Cardinal Cisneros, written on the 31st of August, 1501. What did the letter say? He stated that on that very morning his troops had traveled to the temple where they suspected the order was meeting, that they went in and interrupted a demonic ritual, that they killed all its members without mercy, and that finally they burned the church, reducing it to rubble and the ashes of satanic cadavers. The letter didn't say anything else? Yes, the captain congratulated him for the tip that led them to the temple. Literally, he said, Thankfully, Your Excellency saw the relationship between the Order of the Flesh and the Holy Cathedral of Our Lady of Paris that led us to reveal the evil in an apparently holy church. What relationship is there between Notre Dame and the Order? That was the next and final step in your investigation. Paris. What did I find out in Paris? I don't know. You disappeared there for 15 days when you finally called. You were very distressed. You told me that you found something very important and that you couldn't tell me over the telephone. So I flew to Paris. Why didn't I tell you what I found out? Because when I arrived at your hotel, you had attempted suicide. You were dying. You had swallowed mercury. Plus, you had cut your hand, drawing the symbol of the order of the flesh on your skin. It looked like a Y. How did you know it was a suicide? You left a note. Forgive me, Henry, but to get to the bottom of this, first I must die. Now you know everything, John. Talk to Lori. Have her give you your tickets. What tickets? Ah, did I forget to mention that? You're leaving for Paris this afternoon. That's okay with you, right? Yeah, Henry. I need to know who I am. Exactly, John. Your father would be proud of you. <laughs>